coordinates, private search team, remains recovered. Has Kenny Veach been found? Welcome. Have you ever wondered to yourself how information all around can be both useful and also problematic at the same time? Often in our lives, day to day, even online, information widespread. Times to help us understand stuff and to guide us through things. But there is often many times where we doubt what we hear, what we read. The moments where we are face to face with other humans talking. How do we know what they say is true? How do we know if they are being genuine? Too often, it gets confusing. However, there are those odd moments where that one individual appears from nowhere. Like a messenger, they have a message to inform us about something. And the way they convey it, the depth, the detail, the precision, can greatly help us understand what they're getting at and more likely to believe in what they say. When it comes to a mystery like the M Cave and the disappearance of Kenny Veach, any form of information is helpful, but often it's either lies, misinformation, people who want attention. However, there is one key individual known as Jean. Now, Jean has been around for some time now, monitoring the videos I upload, although not always agreeing with my points. They do have some interesting comments from time to time, mostly about Kenny Veach, and as well as search and rescue teams. As a brief backstory, Jean was a part of a search and rescue team by Clark County in 2014. Now, although unsuccessful in recovering Kenny Veach or finding any clues linked with him, they did come across abandoned campsites within the area and from afar, heading north. And coordinates were provided, valid ones. Now, most importantly, in recent time, Jean has left yet another interesting comment. Now, this is the most recent comment left by Jean. He said, I direct everyone's attention to the bone that was found on July 21st, 2021, by a private search team at the following coordinates. North, 3030, 23.33, and West, 115, 17, 33.14. No one is saying it is a human or animal bone. However, one member of this search team claims it was a human femur bone. The bone was sent to the Nevada office of their medical investigator for analysis. Now, he also said, the coordinates I gave came from a Kenneth Jaeger. They were not searching for Kenny Veach. They were searching for another hiker that got lost. But they came upon the bone. The bone was turned over to the Clark County Sheriff Department for analysis. That is all I know at this time. Now it's very interesting what Jean said. Now another user named Liana did give the correct coordinates as they were mistyped by Jean. Nevertheless, 
they were valid at the end of the day. So let's get into Google Earth and check where these coordinates lead to. Now, upon entering Google Earth, if we type in the coordinates we were given and we do a search, as the camera zooms in and slowly pans around the location, this is the spot where the femur bone was found by the private search team. Now, I just close that off. If we look up close, just have a brief look. As you can see, it is somewhat steep and there is some form of elevation going up the mountain, the hill, but it does seem accessible compared to previous hike routes we have looked at. Now, it makes you think, how did the rescue team find this spot and know where to look to find a bone like that? Well, there are some very interesting points and links I need to get to very shortly to explain that. But before I do, let's just have another look here. So within this area, there seems to be bushes, trees, vegetation. Now, I don't know if that plays a part in concealing stuff, making it harder to see. As Jay Chuck in previous videos in different locations did have difficulties when it came to trees and vegetation obscuring his line of vision. I don't know if that's the case here, looking at it from aerial viewpoint. However, what we must point out, what I must point out, this location here to where the bone was found, if we zoom out and look north or so, it's not far off from Wild Horse Pass. And if we zoom out more, you know where we're going. This is within location exactly of the Kenny Beach M Cave hike route. So this is very possible that it could be Kenny Beach due to the location. Now, aside from the fact that the bone found is within reach of Kenny Beach's M Cave hike route, there is something even more interesting and it kind of reinforces the possibility that this could be Kenny Beach. If we just rotate the screen and just look down from above, look what runs in parallel to the bone, the mine shaft, a key location where the search and rescue team looked back in 2014 and failed, came to a dead end, and also a key location where Kenny Beach stood in the beginning of his M Cave hike video on YouTube. What is the possibility that the bone found is in fact Kenny Beach due to the location? And it's interesting how the private search team were able to come across it in that area. How did they know? Well, before we get any further with explanations, because there is yet more interesting stuff to share, Let's just measure the distance, first of all. So if we try and set it to miles, if possible. There we go. And we select about there. All the way down. We'll do it realistically. As if the Kenny Beach was to walk up there or so. It is about 0 0.30 miles. So not far at all when you consider where Kenny Beach has hiked and the distance he's covered previously. So if we zoom out one more time, that's the hike route Kenny Beach took, as well as Sean, and the mine shaft location is the last known location and the dead end of Kenny Beach's scent and parallel to that point is the bone found many years later, 2021, by the private search team. Now you tell me what you think down below in the comment section. But for now, let's move on with the other key points.
an additional point to make in reference to the mine shaft and the bone. The mine shaft was, and as said, the last location and the dead end when it came to the search and rescue in 2014, as the sniffer dogs could not continue any further as the scent wore off. Now some people said maybe it just wore off over time. Other people were saying maybe Kenny Veach changed clothes or something and that impacted it. But one point, one key point I made previously was the possibility that because the scent has run dead, Kenny Veach could well be within this area. Not inside the mine shaft, but somewhere nearby. And in recent time, with that private search and rescue team, they were able to locate a bone, which to be of a femur bone, possibly human, near the mine shaft, near to where the scent wore off, there's a possibility that that could be Kenny Veach, if you look at it that way. Another small key point to make note of, which is kind of weird, is the name of one of the private search team members, known as Kenneth Yeager. Probably short, Kenny. It's weird and coincidental how someone with that name in a search group is within the area of where Kenny Veach disappeared. Now I'm sure some people would come up with all kinds of theories, including the possibility that Kenneth Yeager is secretly Kenny Veach. Whilst that isn't impossible, it's unlikely. However, let us move on to the next key point, and that is that the search group were not looking for Kenny Veach, but they were looking for another missing hiker. Now that's very interesting because who else has been there? When, where, how? Because we only know of a few people and they've been documented on YouTube. There is only one other individual, one hiker that supposedly went out there to look for Kenny Beach and they did not return. They planned a three day hike trip, exactly the same as Kenny Beach on his final hike route. The person I'm referring to is Eric the Hiker, one of the more mysterious individuals aside from Kenny Beach himself in this entire mystery. Someone who contacted Kenny's ex supposed girlfriend saying he would go out and look for Kenny Veach. Now we don't know what happened later on. All we know of he did not respond or reply back after saying he was going to go. Is there a possibility that Eric disappeared too? And that that private search team upon finding and collecting that bone, the femur bone, that it's actually Eric the hiker's remains? You never know. What could have caused it? How? Many questions. Much more to be added to this mystery in total. But it could be Kenny Veach because of the location. But it could also be Eric who went out looking for Kenny. Because as said, the search and rescue team were looking for another missing hiker. Who else could it be? Game very dark because you start wondering how many more people are missing within that location, that area. Is there some kind of pattern going on? Some kind of dark secret? in which anyone or certain people, wrong place, wrong time, upon entering, don't come out. 
Is there some kind of hotspot area? Is there something dark and sinister within that environment? You never know. In conclusion, in my opinion, there are many links to be made, whether it be Kenny Veach or Eric the Hiker. The location itself does stand out. The fact that it's within the area Kenny Veach was and a part of the hike route itself nearby. The fact that it runs parallel to the mine shaft and the fact that the scent was lost at that area hints the possibility that Kenny Veach was within that area. Some people could argue that Kenny Veach did commit suicide and he went up to that ravine higher up and did it there where it may have been more concealed and more hidden. But the fact that the search team was only able to find the odd bone or so makes you wonder, well, where is the rest of Kenny's body or whoever's body? That's one thing you've got to look at. Another key point to make note of, I'm not fully sure, but I believe Scott Natal was near that area at some point. He said how when he was looking at the mine shaft, he would head over that ridge and have a look on the other side, a place where the search and rescue team did not look previously in the past. Now, did Scott Natal find anything back then? Did he go up that ravine? I'm not fully sure. I don't think he did, or he would have made a video about that. Additionally, Jay Chuck was also within the area and has been recently near the mine shaft, but I don't believe he went up that ravine where this private search team went up. As J Chuck focused on many other ravines on the right hand side of the mine shaft, if I'm not mistaken, so J Chuck wouldn't have come across it. Now, another key point to make note of July 21st, 2021. That's when the team went up there and searched about. And it's taken from then till now to find out about it. Why is it so secretive? Why is it taking this length of time to find out this information? The fact that this search team, unknown of private, makes you wonder, is someone out to get Kenny? Are they involved some way to retrieve him, to recollect him in some way? What is going on? Who are these private search teams? Are these people linked with those rocks and mine shaft being altered with? Could they have been previously looking? We need to look at the dates. July 21st. Did they tie in with when the mine shaft was noticed? When it was altered or when the covered cave was missing its rock we need to have a look back at that because you never know and does it have any link with the tent and sword was that a part of the secret team when they were hiking out there too many links at this moment in time also similar in importance we must understand the other perspective that it could well be animal remains. The bone was from a animal. Aside from the fact of Jean saying it's neither human or animal for definite, one thing to make note of is due to the nature of the environment, the terrain and the extensiveness of wildlife, it could well be an animal. Additionally, what we must also remember is previous hikers who have been out there looking for Kenny did capture and record remains of animals, bones and skulls. For example, Sean, when Sean was out there in the early days looking for Kenny, he stumbled across bone fragments, came across horns, scattered on the ground in a shape of an X, which is kind of odd. But also, later, Jeff Clark came across the odd skull resting upon a rock like it was placed there 
by someone. And then, really Robin, he recorded and captured a skull that was also placed on a rock down one of the canyons. Now aside from this oddness of how these bones and skulls have ended up where they are, potentially out of reach of animals to place them there, it just goes to show that you can find all kinds of skulls, bones and remains. It does not mean to say it's a human though. It could well be animal. But nevertheless, in my opinion, due to the simple fact that you've got these private search teams out there still to this day, which is quite interesting in its own right, but because of where the bone was found, the location, proximity to the mine shaft where Kenny was and the scent was lost, and it being near the M Cave hike route, and just how the factors link with one another and there are valid points to be made, it does make it seem like it leans more towards the possibility of it being human remains. Now, we will ultimately know that's if we are informed once the bone, the femur bone, has been analysed and confirmed to whatever it is, whoever it is. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Tell me what you think your ideas and theories regarding this. That is it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you next time. Goodbye.